live from the Chase Park Plaza Hotel in St. Louis, Missouri, HEC-TV is proud to present the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership's annual luncheon and report to the community. Now, here is your host, Brenda Maddox. Hello and welcome to HCCTV streamcast coverage of the 2018 annual meeting of the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. We are live right now inside the Karasin Ballroom in the beautiful Chase Park Plaza in St. Louis's bustling, historic, vibrant Central West End. Now, Fox News' Margie Elliser will be our host for today's events, and in just a few minutes, we'll be going to the stage for a video presentation to get things going. After that, we're going to see, or rather hear from, actually see and hear from some of the really key thought and business leaders in our region, including St. Louis County Executive Steve Stenger, St. Louis Mayor Lida Krusen, Sheila Sweeney, CEO of the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership, Erica Henderson, Executive Director of St. Louis Promise Zone, who will share the findings of their recent impact report. And Erica will also talk about a new library boxes initiative that gives St. Louis commuters access to surplus library materials. Following Erica, we'll hear from Sharita Hagler, who is Director of STEM STL. Sharita will bring us up to date on efforts to increase STEM education in school districts throughout our region, region, excuse me, including districts that have been underserved in that area and other areas in the past. And finally, we'll be closing with Bob Clark, President and CEO of Clayco Construction. And Bob will talk about his role in the recent Amazon bid, a campaign that has really energized our region and brought together so many factions that can now go forward to include the opportunities out there for our region's economic growth and job development, of course. Today, we're also going to get to see some of the really moving visual presentations that went into the Amazon campaign, including uh, some of the other partnership projects that are going on as well. That includes Hustle from Day One, which has already won three Addy Awards, and it's just a really innovative and moving video that will make you proud of our region and excited for our future. The Amazon Flyover presentation is also very exciting to watch because it really shows you the untapped potential in our area, and again, gets you excited for what kind of things can happen as a result of all of these different economic factions coming together. Okay. We'll also hear and see Fox 2's coverage of the successful effort to keep Save-A-Lot's corporate headquarters right here in St. Louis, just a stone's throw from where they started in 1977 with a single store in Cahokia, Illinois. That again, keeping good jobs and also adding jobs, which is the reason we're all here today. And finally, we'll also learn about Invested, which is a crowdsourcing initiative for startups that launched earlier this month. And of course, we are also going to encourage you to take a moment and visit the St. Louis Economic Development Partnerships website at stlpartnership.com. If you hit on projects, you'll be amazed to see all of the progress that's being made and really some of the exciting things that have happened in the last several months, including Save A Lot, which really just happened in the last couple of weeks. And we're gonna begin now. We're going to start with a video presentation from the stage, enjoy. I think St. Louis is a place uh, rooted in possibility. There is this pioneering spirit that's here. Invention innovation is not new to St. Louis. When we talk about St. Louis, I can speak about St. Louis because I'm an expert. Now, I was born, raised here, went to high school, went to college, started my career here, and had opportunities to go elsewhere, but I chose to stay here because St. Louis has so much to offer, and it's given me more opportunities than I could have ever dreamed of. Every business, the talent pool is so important. St. Louis has that talent pool. Not just from the universities, but you have an entrepreneurial ecosystem where people from all over the country are right here. I've started most of my companies in St. Louis, although we started Square in San Francisco and then opened an office in St. Louis very shortly after. And this is actually our fastest growing office worldwide. It's an environment where people who are, are genuinely invested in uh, the growth uh, of this region. But there's a combination of sort of the Midwestern uh, approachability and the, the general temperament of people to want to give back. That means that you've got people constantly feeding into that next generation. And I think that's what is the edge for, for St. Louis. You see the same characteristics of the employees. I think it's what we call a Midwestern culture. People come to work and they work hard. They come with a mission and that is to, to, to meet the goals of the company 
and help the company grow and prosper. I think that's what defines St. Louis as one of the greatest cities in this country. And that work ethic is just one of determination, one of commitment, and one of delivering. And that makes a difference. That makes a difference. And I see it on our coworkers each and every day, and it comes straight from the heart. This ability to have great passion about what you're doing every day in your job, but then also this passion that you can have about the community that you're living in. You can be in a, live in a lot of different places, but the idea that you can actually have an impact on what's going on um, in a community, in a city, in a, in, in a big town is incredibly empowering. And we have a group of corporate leaders here who have a passion for this city. It's collaborative, it's one that's collegial, and it's one that gets it done. When we can join forces, it says a lot from the standpoint that we are willing to work together for the betterment of our community. And that's what we need, you know, uh, that instead of the river dividing us, the river is uniting us. We have to be able to grow what we have and attract what we don't have or what we need uh, to make sure that overall the region is better. We're not just looking in the past, we're looking forward. And this community not only can we make a difference here in this region, we can help make a difference in our country. And I believe that's, that's the difference. That's the St. Louis difference. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your MC, Margie Ellisor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can we have you take your seats if you haven't already? Welcome to this yearly celebration of the biggest and best projects of the year that are growing St. Louis in new ways. If you have some moments you want to share, we would love for you to do that today. We just want you to follow along. We are using the hashtag STL-GROWN. STL-GROWN. We want to hear your company's STL-GROWN stories. The St. Louis Economic Development Partnership works hard every single day to improve our workforce, support our startups, and help our corporate anchors grow and thrive. I am so happy to be back for this great event this year. Might I add, could we please get a huge round of applause for that great opening video? I was watching it backstage. Makes you be proud to live here in St. Louis, doesn't it? It's fantastic. I'm Margie Ellisor from Fox 2, and I will be your MC for today's luncheon. We want to thank our fabulous platinum sponsors. We could not do this without you. Centene, Clayco, Edward Jones, North Park, the St. Louis, Kansas City Carpenters Regional Council, and River City Casino and Hotel. Thank you so much to our platinum sponsors today. This is amazing. This year, we actually had the most sponsors we've ever had, more than 50 in all. So everyone's hopping on board. So thank you once again for the incredible corporate community we have. Your funding helps us bring even more companies to St. Louis. A little bit about myself. I'm actually a native from the state of Minnesota, but I've chosen to stay here in St. Louis. I've been here over 20 years now, and I'm raising my family here because it is such a great community. Being on the morning show, I have the opportunity to get out and see our amazing communities, the neighborhoods where we live, and get to share a lot of that with our viewers. A couple of years ago, I was live at the Cortex, yes, the innovative platform of all of St. Louis, and they're doing everything from yoga in the mornings to amazing startup companies. Some of you may be a part of those today, and they have Venture Cafe, where all those ideas are coming together. And it's such a great place to be. More restaurants are opening there. Of course, I was there for the opening of the big IKEA store. So, so much going on. And I have to share with you also, just yesterday, I was at the Arch Grounds, and it is phenomenal what we are doing down there. If you haven't been there, you need to check it out soon. But it's, as you enter where you're gonna get the tram tickets, it is gonna be so impressive for the visitors who come to our great city. Went down to the museum. It is completely different as well. The museum at the Gateway Arch, and it is beautiful. And I'm so excited on July 3rd when that opens for everyone to see. I'm gonna have all my family from out of state come in and check it out. I'm always excited as well when Fox 2 News is able to share something with you. And we were out at Northwest Plaza just last week, 
And uh, we talked about Save-A-Lot, the seventh largest grocery chain in the country, announced its new headquarters would be in St. Louis County. And what used to be, you know, that dead shopping mall, reporter Patrick Clark was there with the story. A major grocery store chain is choosing to remain in the region. Save-A-Lot setting up shop in St. Anne. That's where Patrick Clark joins us live now with more on this. Patrick. Yeah, you know, Save a Lot first began in Cahokia back in 1977 with just one store. Now they have more than 1,200, including their distribution centers nationwide. This behind me, the former Northwest Plaza shopping mall, now to be the future headquarters for Save a Lot in the very near future. Well, in baseball, you might call this a save. St. Louis-based grocery store chain staying here in the Gateway City. It's a $20 million investment that retains about 450 jobs and adds 64 new ones over three years' time. A new 165,000 square foot space is where the company will move into at the former Northwest Plaza shopping mall. Construction will soon begin on a new corporate headquarters for Save a Lot at the crossings at Northwest. You know, you had the state of Missouri, Missouri Partnership, St. Louis Economic Partnership, and St. Louis County combining efforts to keep a hometown business from picking up and relocating. They were looking at several other markets, and there was a significant risk that they would relocate out of St. Louis altogether. Well, this is a big win or big get for St. Anne. You know, St. Louis County moved some of their offices out here earlier. They were told now as many as 2,800 people use this space here, as well as the retail developments, this mixed-use development out here at the crossings at Northwest. So a big deal for St. Anne. In St. Anne, Patrick Clark, Fox 2 News. Yeah, I love seeing how companies like Save-A-Lot believe in remaining here in St. Louis. It shows that we live in a great and thriving town. Now I'd like to introduce St. Louis County Executive Steve Stanger to talk about the strong growth trend in St. Louis County. Thank you all very much. It is great to be back in this big room with leaders from across our region for the partnership's annual meeting. Appropriately, regionalism is the theme of this year's event. No business, no community, no governmental entity exists in a bubble. Not in today's connected, tech-enabled world. When major corporations invest more than $5 billion in capital improvements, expansions, and new construction in St. Louis County, as they've done since 2015. And when those investments generate more than 5,700 new jobs and retain over 30,000 positions, as they have, the benefits ripple throughout the entire region. The fact is, when you improve St. Louis County, the population leader and strongest economic engine in the state, you improve the entire metropolitan area. While we have focused on county residents, our administration has always and also looked beyond the county's boundaries to gauge the potential impact of any of the major initiatives that we have undertaken. From the day I was sworn in as county executive in January of 2015, our administration identified the areas of focus that are key to moving our region forward. Our commitment is to ensure equitable economic opportunities for all, to improve and protect the health and safety of our residents, to support desirable and vibrant neighborhoods, and to make sure that government is responsive and responsible. From the start, we felt there was one key component without which those four goals could never be fully accomplished. And that factor was and is public safety. For that reason, our administration early on began laying the groundwork for the public safety initiative that became Proposition P, the half-cent sales tax that St. Louis County voters overwhelmingly passed last April. And now, county residents are beginning to see the very real benefits and the promises of Proposition P. I want to note that from the very beginning, the strongest advocates of that proposal were some of the leaders in this room including members of Civic Progress, the Regional Business Council, and the St. Louis Regional Chamber. We thank you for providing your key and timely support. Proposition P is now funding numerous vital initiatives, including body cameras, 
hiring more police officers, improving police pay, mobilizing two officer patrol cars, and expanding officer training on topics such as peaceful conflict resolution. An initiative of this scale pays benefits well beyond St. Louis County. We are pleased that since the passage of Prop P, voters in the city of St. Louis and Jefferson and Franklin counties followed suit and approved public safety sales taxes of their own. Residents and police officers throughout our region are safer and more secure because of them. I am pleased St. Louis County was able to lead the way. We cannot speak about public safety without touching on the epidemic of opioid addiction. I think everyone in this room has been impacted by this scourge. When legislators in Jefferson City proved unable to pass a prescription drug monitoring program, or PDMP, the St. Louis County, St. Louis County confronted the crisis head on. At my urging, the St. Louis County Council approved legislation creating a prescription drug monitoring database for the county. We designed our PDMP so that other counties and jurisdictions would be able to contract with St. Louis County for this vital service. Among the first to join us were the city of St. Louis, St. Charles, Franklin, and Jefferson counties. Our PDMP was indeed a regional initiative of historic proportion. In fact, St. Louis County's PDMP now covers 79%, 79% of Missouri's population and 92% of all medical providers in the state. Our, thank you. Our, thank, you. thank you. Our administration also recognized so long as one area of the county lagged behind, the rest of the county could not reach its full economic potential. For that reason, much of our administration's work to date has been focused on North County. And we recognize that the revitalization of the once dead Northwest Plaza Mall would play a key role in that effort. In the remodeled and rehabbed crossings at Northwest, we saw an opportunity to boost North County while also improving the efficiency and accessibility of key county governmental services. We moved several departments that had been scattered in various locations, including the Elections Board, the Elections Board, Workforce Development, municipal courts, and human services to this modern, high-tech center. County government's reputation as a strong and reliable entity has proven a key factor in the success at the crossings. With county government and other businesses, such as Charter Communications, as major tenants, and as you heard, save a lot, numerous businesses followed and signed leases there. As you saw in the KTVI report, a once-dead mall is now a thriving commercial and governmental nexus. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the crossings is almost completely occupied, employs 2,800 workers, and creates $328 million in annual economic impact for North County. The most recent tenant, as we've said, is the supermarket giant Save-A-Lot, which announced last week that it is locating its world headquarters along with 500 jobs at the crossings. I would also note that St. Louis County government's reputation for stability and reliability is part and parcel of our AAA bond rating, a designation that tells businesses across the nation that the county is a great place to live and work and a prime location for investment. The success of the crossings is an example of the tremendous potential for redevelopment in North County. That same potential to create jobs exists at the old Jamestown Mall. The revitalization of Jamestown Mall has been a top priority for our administration since I took office. St. Louis County residents deserve a redevelopment of which they can be proud. The St. Louis County Port Authority has successfully purchased the final parcels at the site and is now reviewing proposals to return the old mall to productive use. Suffice it to say, St. Louis County is strong and getting stronger. The signs are everywhere. In Clayton, where cranes are erecting Centene's new $770 million headquarters, a regionally transformative project that will soon be home to 2,000 additional employees. At 39 North, our new Ag Tech Innovation District in Creve Core that is reinforcing and growing St. Louis County as the global epicenter of plant science. 
and where we recently unveiled Invested, an innovative investment tool that is focusing the power of crowdfunding on our region's thriving startup sector. At Clayton-based Varsity Tutors, one of the region's fastest growing and best funded tech startups, which has raised an additional $50 million in capital investments this year. At the Boeing plant in North County, where a new contract to upgrade Navy fighter planes will keep the Super Hornet assembly line rolling well into the next decade. And just this week, the announcement that the biologic drug company Thermo Fisher is investing $50 million in its county manufacturing site and adding 80 new jobs there. These are just a few examples where construction, expansion, and investment in St. Louis County are pointing to a brighter future for our entire region. But to repeat, no such developments exist in a bubble. While the current unprecedented county economic boon is producing benefits beyond county boundaries, the same holds true with new construction and expansion projects elsewhere in our region. When Amazon opens its first Missouri Fulfillment Center in St. Peter's next year, that facility's 1,500 new jobs will positively affect both sides of the Missouri River. Many of those workers will live and spend their earnings in St. Louis County. When the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency was seeking a new site for its national headquarters, our administration wholeheartedly supported the effort to keep the agency and its 3,100 jobs in the city of St. Louis, recognizing that such a major win for the city would also be a win for the entire region. As chairman of the East-West Gateway Council of Governments, I am in a unique position to encourage further cooperation between governmental agencies for the benefit of the metropolitan area. And I am doing just that. To that end, I have asked East-West Gateway to convene a summit of regional leaders on May 30th to begin discussing four topics of critical importance to our community. Public safety and crime, education and workforce development, economic development, and having a common voice for the St. Louis region in Jefferson City and Springfield, Illinois. I would also like to acknowledge and congratulate the new president of the St. Louis Regional Chamber, Tom Chulik. Tom, we look forward to working with you to do great things in our region. Another key to moving forward and growing stronger is identifying places where governments can work together to function more efficiently. Most people don't realize that St. Louis County and the city of St. Louis particularly cooperate in a myriad ways. For example, the IT departments in the county and city are working together to disseminate governmental assistance information through a region-wide 311 service. Meanwhile, our Department of Public Health recently worked with its counterpart in the city to complete the first ever joint community health assessment. Both departments also teamed up to secure federal grants in the Promise Zone and to fund the RECAST project, which provides underserved use in our region with mental health services. And once again, these are just a couple of the many ways in which we collaborate with our regional partners. Later this year, the group Better Together will issue a report that includes proposals to coordinate county and city functions and eliminate duplication. When that analysis is complete, our administration will carefully study it, acting, as always, with the good of the whole region in mind. Again, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And my special thanks to Sheila Sweeney and her entire team at the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership for hosting this event and for their outstanding regional work and cooperation, which is transforming our St. Louis community. Thank you. Huge thank you to our county executive, Steve Stenger. You know, we love hearing about all of the innovative and exciting projects that are taking place here in the St. Louis region. Next up, I'm honored to introduce the mayor of the city of St. Louis, Lida Krusen. In just a little over a year in office, she has many big wins to celebrate. Good afternoon. How is everybody today? Good? Good, good, good. I'm really thrilled to be with you today to celebrate this year's accomplishments and to take a real brief but quick look into the future. 
Uh, I do want to stop and thank, just for a second, Chairman Carlos Ramirez. Carlos, I know you're out there. I can't see up here. There he is, right there. Round of applause. Of course, Executive Director Sheila Sweeney, Rodney Krim, the entire SLEDP board and staff. And I want to make a special thank you here to someone who's in the room. I also don't know where he's sitting. And that is Rob Dixon, Missouri Department of Economic Development. Rob, where are you? He's right there. OK, good. Uh, we appreciate your help. We appreciate what the state, how the state partners with us. And literally, many of these projects and accomplishments that we're talking about today could not be done without the help of the Missouri Department of Economic Development. So as Margie said, I've been the mayor for about a year, year and eight days to be exact, but who's counting? But I do want to mention just uh, a few of the big successes of this past year. Uh, NGA, we're going to keep talking about that. Uh, I want to give a thank you to Otis Williams, who I believe is also here today, because we are about to deliver this 99-acre site to the government, cleared, cleaned, and remediated. This is $2 million in construction, 3,100 jobs that average almost $100,000 each, and 1,300 construction jobs. And you may have heard recently we announced the Geospatial Resource Center at T-Rex, and so that, that will be a, a major plus. I also want to just say thank you uh, and that we appreciate Nestle Purina's new 300 IT jobs. I think I heard someone say yes out there, uh, and, and that is extremely important to us. And also, of course, U.S. Bank's 200 new jobs. I want to mention that Rankin has a new manufacturing incubator under construction that will train and provide opportunities for new startups and new jobs. Cortex, you heard a bit about that, but it continues to boom. 5,000 employees, a new hotel, a new parking garage, new building being renovated, a new metro stop coming soon, and of course, Vicia, the new restaurant named one of the best, actually the second best in the entire United States. So if you haven't been to Vicia, or Vicia, however you pronounce it, uh, make, make a trip there. You know, we cannot talk about economic development today without talking for a second about Amazon. It was a whirlwind, five or six weeks, and I am very proud of the proposal that we submitted. But I also just want to say that it was SLEDP, the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership, that led the way on this proposal, along with Bob Clark, all of the county executives. Now, that's important. All of the county executives. Everyone pulled together. We proved to each other that together we are more than the sum of our parts. And we will continue to use that proposal and use what we learned to pitch new projects. In St. Louis, we're in the midst of a building boom. So far this fiscal year, we have issued 50% more in building permits than we did at the same period last year. That's 50% more in dollars than we did last year. That's Ballpark Village, 100 Kings Highway, 300 South Broadway, Jefferson Arms, Dogtown Apartments, Del Mar Divine, Choice Neighborhoods, and there are many more projects in the pipeline. I will have to say, I do love the sight of a construction dumpster. Thank you. So public safety remains job one. I'm proud to have Judge Jimmy Edwards and Chief John Hayden leading this challenge, and I'm proud that voters passed Prop P in the city, thank you voters, to give police and firefighters a raise they deserve and to provide more funding for more summer jobs and more recreation programs. The next topic I want to touch on is vacant buildings. If you've been following the media, you've, you've seen some of this work, but vacant buildings are a top priority. Nothing good happens in a vacant building. We have many new partners working with us on this, including SLU and Legal Services of Eastern Missouri. There are 8,000 vacant buildings, give or take, in the city, and 17,000 vacant lots. About half of these are publicly owned and about half are privately owned. And we won't solve this issue overnight, but we cannot be deterred by the size of the problem that we inherited. 
these buildings and these lots have accumulated over many decades. And we must and we are tackling this with new energy, with new partners, new marketing, new funding for demolition. Next, we are also cleaning up St. Louis. The city's going to do the big stuff. We'll have the big orange trucks out there. But we ask each of you to help with the small stuff, too. You know, take a walk, maybe in a place that you don't normally take a walk. You know, bring a little trash bag with you and give us a lift on that. We're also going to be engaging the business community, and uh, I'm not going uh, to leave that here today, but you're going to hear more about that next week. Uh, Next up, I'm so proud of our renewed and expanded workforce development efforts. We all know how important that is. A few months ago, I challenged Slate, St. Louis Agency on Training and Employment, and Dr. Alice Prince to skill up St. Louis. I challenged her to train and certify 500 people in 100 days, certify them in technology, in healthcare, in construction. Slate responded, but they didn't skill up 500 people. They skilled up 943 people, and these folks are now employable. So thank you to Slate. We know that workforce development is a big deal, and we know it is a challenge, and so it takes all of us working together, and if it's 500 in this quarter and 943 in the next, each of you can help with that. So a safe city, a clean city, a busy downtown, and a skilled workforce are all so important to the success of our economic development activities. Now, after one year and eight days, I'm looking forward to next year. This summer, the new Gateway Arch Park is going to be opening on July the 3rd. I got a sneak peek of it this week. Let me tell you, it's fabulous. You won't be disappointed. All of St. Louis is going to be so proud to visit this project. And what a tremendous public-private partnership this was. So when you walk through the new entrance to the Gateway Arch Park, you will feel very close to downtown. When you're walking from the old courthouse, it's a block. It's almost nothing, and that connection from the arch to downtown is very important to the success of this. So after the arch opens on July the 3rd, in August, our region is going to host the 100th PGA Championship. And in November, we're going to reopen the $30 million Soldiers Memorial renovation. These are all fabulous opportunities to see our city in a national light, and for the enjoyment of our residents, businesses, and visitors. We're also on the cusp of choosing the design for Shoto's Greenway. And this year, we'll come together, city, county, and state, we hope, to expand and renovate our convention center. We must have a competitive facility to keep from falling behind our peer cities and to continue to attract visitors and conventions to our city to fill up our hotel rooms and eat in our restaurants and spend money here. So I'm looking forward to working with everyone on that. We're also going to continue to pursue opportunities to have a better airport and develop it into an economic development asset. You'll hear more about that shortly as well. And finally, County Executive Stanger and I appointed a city-county governance task force. Suzanne Sitherwood of Spire, Will Ross of Wash U, Orendum Carr, Brian Cave, and Kira Van Neal of Boeing, a stellar group, by the way, I hope you agree, will deliver their report this fall. And it will provide a roadmap, we hope, for how the city and the county can move forward together. We all, thank you. <clears throat> We all know this, but it's worth repeating. The competition should not be between Clayton and downtown, or between Wildwood and Hazelwood. The competition is between our region 
and Louisville and Nashville and Kansas City and Indianapolis and the East Coast and the West Coast. We need to make our big decisions regionally. I, I challenge you to dream for a minute about what could we do if we didn't spend, oh, 500 million or a billion dollars a year on duplicative governments? What could we do? Could we have good schools for everybody? Could we have a more skilled workforce? Could we have more jobs, better health care, more opportunities for all of us? I think that's worth thinking about as we embark on a process that certainly will not be easy. So I leave you with just one challenge. It's a little one, so you can do it. Almost all of you are in business here, and you have openings in your company and jobs to fill. Tomorrow, hire a young person who may not be easy to hire, maybe a kid that doesn't look like your kid, Take the time to give he or she an opportunity that they might not otherwise get. It's not easy, it's a small thing, but it will make a difference. And I know that all of you are all about making a difference. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Krusen and County Executive Stenger for the great work you do for the city and county of St. Louis. I also want to thank HEC TV. They are here today live streaming. You may have seen them around, and guess what that means? You could be on TV, so that's your warning. It's the only warning you're going to get. You could be on TV today. All right, with that, I would like to introduce the CEO of the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership, Sheila Sweeney. Her work to unify our region is nothing short of Remarkable. Please welcome Sheila Sweeney. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for making time to join us today. And thank you to Mayor Lyda Krusen and County Executive Steve Stenger. We, asked, we have asked them to support some ambitious projects in the last year. And at every turn, they've encouraged us to be bold and to take a new approach. Elected leadership that is willing to abandon the status quo makes for an incredible moment in time for St. Louis. Our region can do things differently, not for change's sake, but to make change. Change is necessary because too often, St. Louis is compared to its past, 23 Fortune 500 companies in 1980, and a Lambert Airport that was a major hub for TWA. Those are the data points I hear again and again, but times are changing and deregulation at the federal level changed the business environment in St. Louis forever. So how do we embrace that change? How do we create that culture and a vibe in our community that makes change a catalyst for equitable growth? I believe we do it by embracing a totally different attitude. Louis Pasteur said that chance favors only the prepared mind. On behalf of my entire team at the partnership, we embrace that change because it inspires and it motivates us. Missouri has 10 Fortune 500 companies and nine are in St. Louis. That's a good start for Missouri and for St. Louis, but we must grow our base, hence our continued support of innovation and entrepreneurship alongside our programs to support the growth of existing and attracting new businesses to our market. And when it comes to global connectivity, do we miss being a hub for TWA? or do we miss flights to continental Europe? A lot of us believe it's the latter issue, and that's most important, and our first step toward a nonstop flight to continental Europe is WOW Air's inaugural flight in May. So thanks to our elected leaders. <laughs> thanks to our elected leaders, St. Louis has a game-changing incentive that will help us compete with other U.S. markets for that direct flight to Europe. Our business community has told me again and again that, I, that a direct flight to Europe is key to their staying or expanding here in St. Louis. Iceland's WOW Air is just the beginning. We're actively working on more direct flights to Europe from St. Louis. 
In addition to our multinational companies, we're constantly looking for new ways to help our entrepreneurs. One of our most innovative initiatives is to encourage the formation and growth of the new business in, in, is invested, our new crowdfunding portal that is getting national attention. It launched last week and invested is a hyper-local platform that companies can utilize to raise money anywhere in the company. The partnership is the first economic development organization in the nation to develop a crowdfunding site. So let's take a look at that announcement. It is a pleasure to join you as we celebrate the launch of Invested. Invested is unique because it's hyper-local, so we focus specifically on the region of St. Louis. It's the first crowdfunding platform in the country. It's city-centric, it's for people in town to invest in businesses in town, and as part of the Wellbeing Brewing Company, we couldn't be more excited to be the first business out of the gate. Jeff Stevens' business, Wellbeing Brewing, received their first investors today, so I couldn't have asked for anything better. Didn't plan that, it just happened to work out that way, so for me, it's it's excitement, it's also a relief to get this out and in the public eye. It is the only one of its kind sponsored by government really anywhere in the nation. So we hope others will follow suit and uh, we hope that it offers uh, our entrepreneur community one more tool in their toolbox to have a successful business. We're excited to launch, we're excited, it's an innovative idea and we're really excited to be part of it. The German Olympic team trained with non-alcoholic wheat beer. They actually use it as a sports recovery drink because when you take the alcohol out, it turns out that beer is one of the most healthy drinks on the planet. The Economic Development Partnership being the first to offer this crowdfunding portal and uh, the first uh, healthy beer uh, in, in the world, uh, you know, kind of joining forces together, it, you know, it, it bodes well for St. Louis and the innovation that's behind all we do. To take a short break now for lunch so our attendee, attendees can enjoy themselves but during that time we're going to show you a series of video presentations that will showcase why St. Louis is primed for future growth and we're also going to tell you about some of the strides that our existing economic engines and businesses are making in order to improve our area and also what they have had just recently happen even in the last year. So 60 years ago, we started as a local business, became a regional business, then a nationwide business, and now we're operating in over 90 countries. Uh, we're in an era where many corporate headquarters are moving from the place where they maybe were originally founded. Uh, that has never crossed our mind. The things that helped my father grow our business, those qualities are still here, plus others as a larger business. First of all, it's in the central part of the United States, so it's very easy and efficient to get to both coasts. Second of all, the costs in the St. Louis region and the state of Missouri on a relative basis, and also Illinois, is very attractive. And third, we have found that it is not difficult at all to move some of our executives from our field operations into St. Louis. It is such a livable town. We have world-class institutions. We have one of the very best zoos in the, in the whole country. Our botanical garden uh, is as close to Kew as one of the top two in the world. We have an art museum that is certainly in the top 10 of the entire country. And those institutions are free. Uh, there is lots and lots of things to do culturally. And one other really neat element in St. Louis is it is really convenient to get around this town. You can get to virtually any place in this town in 20 minutes. Frankly, I think our employees are as engaged with our business as any company in America, and we are very proud of that, and they are very happy to be here. We are growing in St. Louis because this is an exceptional startup environment. It's right now a very wonderful place to attract new talent. St. Louis has a great tech community. Everyone's gated in Silicon Valley. It's not the way here. We're good people. We want each other to succeed. Spend a Thursday afternoon in, in Cortex and 
or the T-Rex and see all the work that's being done. And I want to make sure that Microsoft knows about all the great work that we could leverage here in, in St. Louis. I chose St. Louis because this is really the epicenter of innovation not just in the St. Louis region, but globally. St. Louis has a ton of innovation going on, really passionate people in a lot of different fields. I'm from St. Louis, I love St. Louis, I was born and raised in the city, and you know, I felt the, the need to put my business where I grew up. Love St. Louis. We have fantastic museums that are mostly free. Coming from New York, I heard about this place called Forest Park. I was told the best way to see the, the park was to, to rent a bike and kind of go around. So I waited online to rent a bike, and then an arm comes out to shake my hand, and I turn around, it's a police officer. And I was like, okay, I'm in trouble already. We talked about the Katy Trail, we talked about the Cardinals and the Yankees. We had like a 10 minute conversation, and all I keep on thinking is, where am I? Then you've got these assets. Uh, private schools and public schools and options that are hugely making a difference for our children and families. We're graduates of WashU and we decided to stay in St. Louis after we founded our business. There are so many accelerators and programs like Venture Cafe where you feel like you can talk to other entrepreneurs and grow from there. It rapidly became clear that St. Louis was the place to be. The people you bump into in the hallway, they're some of the brightest plant scientists in the country. And from the Danforth Center, they go on to start their own labs at universities and institutes around the country. Being exposed to other creative ideas and people, I and mean, you're seeing that in every aspect of St. Louis culture right now. Why not St. Louis? It is the best place to grow and develop a business. This is a great American city going through a renaissance and being a part of that and helping people rediscover what's great about St. Louis, that's super exciting to be a part of. I think, you know, you define, you define your home um, not by a, necessarily a place always, right? But by the purpose that you've had and the work that you do and then the friends that you make along the way. And so I was born one place, but I found a home here in St. Louis because of the connections and the people and the engagement and the openness and how it's really allowed me, frankly, to, to grow and to develop and to contribute I learned a lot from being in St. Louis about that and how it can really create and engage a, a powerful network of people and how they feel about what they're doing every day. Where the passion comes from is also sort of the, the community, the environment, um, the, the way that you're able to live your life, right? And I think that one thing that St. Louis is able to do, it has great uh, Fortune 500, 1,000 companies, as well as great startups that are here. So this, this ability to have great passion about what you're doing every day in your job, but then also this passion that you can have about the community that you're living in, the balance that you can strike in your life, and so I think all of that has created this incredible workforce um, that would be excited to, you know, be able to uh, partner with one of the, you know, the, the world-class brands um, that is helping to create the future and to really help not only Amazon create the future, but to help St. Louis be part of that and become and developing a new future would just be an amazing thing. The years may change, but HEC-TV's mission remains the same, to strengthen and promote the education, arts, and cultural communities in the St. Louis area. And 2017 was no exception. HEC covered our region like no other media outlet, focusing on the arts and education, highlighting groups and individuals making a difference, engaging authors and others in conversation, producing compelling documentaries, broadcasting meetings and functions to educate and inform our community, and teaching students from across our country and beyond, leading the way in interactive learning. HEC-TV's original programming and service earned 20 awards in 2017. Mid-America Emmys, Tellys, 
and other honors, including the pinnacle when it comes to partnerships, earning this top award for our work with the St. Louis Art Fair. Watch for much more to come in 2018. Award-winning programming, community partnerships, original documentaries, and an all-new Educate Today website. It's all on HECTV in 2018. So we're at uh, Square's office in St. Louis today, and this is actually our fastest growing office worldwide. So we opened an office here uh, about three years ago and started hiring, and the talent pool is just amazing in St. Louis. So we've uh, just sort of doubled down on my hometown. You look at a company like Amazon, which is always stressing the value that it can bring to its customers. Um, part of that value comes from how you control costs and, and what qualities you can give. It's not just a question of cheap labor, it's a question of what can somebody afford to do? What sort of life can that person afford to have and still work at your company? And in St. Louis, uh, literally, you can have a sub six figure salary and afford your own house, have great schools. You can have access to all the cultural amenities. That's not possible in San Francisco. It's not possible in New York. It's not possible in Boston anymore. Um, and even the second tier cities are not able to offer that lifestyle. I mean, Denver's priced out already. So. If you want a workforce that's significant, then the question is, you know, how are these guys going to live? And in St. Louis, I mean, I'm looking at a house right there. Um, anyone here could probably afford that house that's beautiful and right across the street. That's how accessible St. Louis is for the average working person. What St. Louis offered, which I've never seen anywhere else, is this culture of excellence in primary education, and not just the private schools, but, but the public schools are awesome. What I did notice um, when I left St. Louis was how sparse the educational opportunities are for average people. Now, I'm not talking about your elite schools. You know, if you can afford, you know, six figures to send your kid to school, great, have fun with that. But if you're talking about public education, St. Louis really has this spectacular array of options for people who just have a normal family and want to put their kids in school. I'm from St. Louis, I grew up here, and I have the option of living anywhere on the planet. I have a wife who would be happy to live overseas. Um, and we chose to come back here uh, because it's great. And I'd love to share that with the folks at Amazon. I came to St. Louis on a roll of the dice because we looked around the country trying to find the best place for plant science research. It rapidly became clear that there was no other choice. St. Louis was the place to be. The Danforth has been very well known for, for many years as really the center of, of plant science research in the country along with a few other places. So we felt brave enough and confident enough to take our savings and take our severance package and just move sight unseen. Didn't have jobs, didn't have interviews, but everything fell into place and now I have a fantastic position here at the Danforth. It was a calculated roll of the dice, and it really worked. It worked great. I'm actually running and managing the X-ray CT facility. It's the first industrial scale X-ray tomography instrument, just like the CAT scan at the hospital. First one of its kind in North America, dedicated exclusively to studying plants. And to have it at the Danforth is perfect, because you have the best scientists, the best facilities, and, and someone with a background and expertise in imaging to, to manage it. It's a perfect combination. St. Louis, it's just getting better and better. The whole 39 North project, all the facilities that are right in the area, they'll now be connected, they'll be walkable, they'll be bikeable, hikeable, runnable. It's gonna be a fantastic place to be, just making the whole atmosphere so much more pleasant. The job is great, but now, even the atmosphere and the building and the neighborhood, everything is going to be improving. So it's going to make working hard very easy. I probably wake up about 5.45, 6 o'clock in the morning. I have to get up my son first, Maddox. 
I'm probably coaxing him into the bathroom about six o'clock, um, make sure he gets dressed. As he's doing those things, I'm making his, his lunch. Right around the time, about 6.40, 6.50, as she's getting on the bus to go, I'm getting up uh, my younger daughter, Naima, she's five. Uh, uh, make sure she gets her shoes on, uh, backpacks together. Uh, neighborhood friend will come over and likes to walk her and to the bus stop, so I'll walk with them, because I always walk her to the bus stop for sure. Once they get ready, then I jump in the shower. It's probably about 7.45, 8 o'clock. Head off to work. I go work down at the T-Rex building. And then generally from there, it's just free-flowing work. I am a web developer for Titan. Uh, they're a small web consulting firm. I was initially a part of the original group of Launch Code alumni that came through back in 2014. And I was placed in the same year. And since then, I've been placed two different times at Launch Code. Tuesdays, I volunteer here at the Mentor Center. I'm a current a teacher fellow now. If the day's not crazy, I'll come here between six and eight and help people with their, with their projects. My wife is also doing a master's program while she's going, uh, going to work. Like our dream is just to, to, to live in a place where like our community is soaring. If we can improve our community, that will ultimately improve the place for our kids. I'm always a person who's looking to grow. I mean, I'm always a person who is, wants to be inclusive rather than exclusive. This is an extremely great place to grow. And to, like, to, be, to be at the ground floor as it grows, I think that's extremely interesting. So I would love to be here for that. We're the Silicon Prairie. There's people who are becoming much more creative, much more innovative, thinking about new ideals and new ways of doing that, and they do it through technology. We are a good foundational piece for St. Louis to, to represent that. You connect with young people by making an exciting, collaborative environment to want to work in. It just reflects our culture, making sure that we have innovation going on all the time. Our new building, all the facilities here, all the renovations that we've done, the headquarters that we have currently, as well as the Advanced Technology Center, have all been built by a diverse St. Louis area firm. We hope that we are a good foundational piece for St. Louis with our Advanced Technology Center, through our ecosystem of connections and ties and relationships with the biggest uh, OEMs, partners in the world. Uh, last year we spent uh, $400 million with small uh, and diverse firms, and women-owned firms uh, that are out there, and we help develop that next generation of talent and, and resources and partnerships that are very important across the landscape of our business. A building is one thing, but it's all about the people. People have to occupy that building, right? And there's a real culture that's developed with that building as well. Why not St. Louis? It is the best place to grow and develop a business. And people care here. People truly care about that next generation of, of businesses and talent, but we have to develop that talent. So we have a stewardship and a responsibility to make sure that uh, the resources that we have available to us that we're investing in the future of our company and other companies in the St. Louis area. I'm the general manager for a district for Microsoft based headquarters here out of San Luis called the Mid-America District. We're going to be setting up what we call a Microsoft Technology Center. Essentially around the world we have 40 of these facilities, they're very high end, it's a big investment from Microsoft in which we innovate in these facilities with our customers, with our partners, and we bring companies in, we bring partners in, and we develop new technologies in these technology centers. We're going through the next phase of an amazing revolution, which is the digital transformation. We're seeing more businesses digitizing their assets, digitizing their data, and actually changing their business model. And what I will encourage everyone is that to ask yourself, how, where are, am I in that digital transformation journey? And what else I can do, partnering with Microsoft, partnering with other technology providers, to go and, and accelerate the digital journey. 
Coming to St. Louis was all about the innovation that we see here in this market. I continue telling people that this is not an office move. This is a cultural move. We came here, we evaluated the market, and there's two main things that we look for. We look for talent, where can we find people, and we thought that the universities, the partnerships that you have here was a great place for talent. And the second piece is innovation. We are in the innovation business. Spend a Thursday afternoon in, in Cortex and, or the T-Rex and see all the work that's being done was something that was very intriguing for us. There's so much going on here. As you connect with different people in that community, you're learning all the time how technology can really impact the world and how we, we're leveraging those technologies to drive the digital transformation that is happening around all of our industries. I think that more people around the U.S. should know about this, and I want to make sure that Microsoft knows about this, uh, all the great work that we could leverage here in, in St. Louis. I'm Chris Dornfeld, I'm the president and co-founder of Bonfire. Our mission is to help deliver technology that, that creates a world where everyone loves their job. One of our first clients was Express Script. We're working with them just to help build a better culture and better engagement within their population. It's exciting for us to work with a company of that scale and that many people to help them improve communication, and collaboration, and connectivity, all with the idea of helping shape behavior and just build a better culture and a better outcome for them. So the nice thing is we work really as a partner with them to help them improve their business and in doing so help improve ours. We're located in the hill, which is right on the outside of Cortex, in this wonderful warehouse building, part of this great community, so we can walk to different shops and cafes and restaurants. But also, in a five minutes, we're part of the Cambridge Innovation Center and 4240 and participating with this really dense cluster of startups in the ecosystem. And it's been a great environment as we've grown. We've also had some flexible space within the building, and so we can grow and evolve in a way that allows our company not to commit to too much too quickly. But we've grown in the last uh, 18 months. We were 10 people, and now we're 33 and we'll probably be closer to 40 or 50 by the end of this year. We are growing in St. Louis because this is an exceptional startup environment. I think one of the most exciting things we see is this connection of different sized companies and different organizations. So it's not just companies within the same industry, but companies outside of industry and even nonprofits and arts organizations. What we're seeing is a culture that's beginning to emerge of real collaboration and cross-pollinization of all sorts of different ideas. So whether you're exposed to really interesting musicians and some of the cool things happening um, down like on Cherokee Street with printmaking and you know, visual arts, these are all sort of feeding into this creative economy that's being into work here because that's what really fuels innovation. It's not just working with on what you have in front of you, but being exposed to other creative ideas and people. Um, and you're seeing that in every aspect of St. Louis culture right now. I'm from St. Louis. I love St. Louis. I was born and raised in the city. I felt the, the need to put my business where I grew up. I'm the founder and creator of Pulped, which is No Ink. I was a former election director from St. Louis. Was there about eight years. There was a need out there to help, you know, smooth the process, make it a lot simpler, easier, and more efficient. And so started to build that in St. Louis and then branched out to, you know, most of the Missouri counties and then all over the country now. We're in 19 states, over 450 jurisdictions, election jurisdictions nationwide. The last November election, we had 20,000 out being used on election day. We're continuing to grow this business almost daily. It's exciting to, to see you know, the activity that's going around and the, the interest. We're just kind of taking day by day right now and year by year, hopefully, and, and continuing to grow. We are an Arch Grant recipient. A lot of you know young businesses are moving downtown in T-Rex or over in Cortex, things like that. So it's just great to see a lot of that going on. We wanted to be somewhere downtown um, that is an area that can continue to grow and that's exactly what it seems to do. We're right behind Schlafly's, which is a great place to go get a, a sandwich or a, an adult beverage. Coming from St. Louis and being a part of St. Louis, you know, that's really important to me, you know, to continue to give back to the city that's always given so much to me.
Companies have been struggling forever to get the sales forecast right. They need things to help organize their, their sales team and get them selling more. And that's what we do. We have incredible algorithms that help the sales managers and the sales team. We're blessed because we have Jim and he's an incredible leader. We have a really good success recipe. We've left T-Rex after about 10 months um, and grew into this space. And we're about out of this space now too. We're here because we love downtown. We love all the growth, all the development. There's great people here for uh, the tech community and that's why you hear so much about St. Louis being a star as far as new uh, tech startup growth. Everyone's gated in Silicon Valley. Um, it's not the way here. Like, we're, we're good people. We, we want each other to succeed. The more St. Louis succeeds, the more we will. We hosted an event called Drive. And what we did is we built this community where everyone in St. Louis could come together. Teaching companies how to think about the next level, to get out of where they are today and think about the, growing it to the next level because we want market leaders here. We love St. Louis. We love what it has to offer us as a tech company. We have a lot of folks that live downtown. They love everything that's going on here. Uh, they walk to work, they ride their bikes. It's been so much more vibrant downtown. With the growth of T-Rex especially, it's fun because you can see all of these young professionals building their careers. I think it's as simple as we're really good people who work really hard. And if we can keep those fundamental things in our forefront all the time, we're gonna thrive at home, we're gonna thrive in business, we're gonna thrive as a city. George Brill, founder of Talison Technologies. We have a system that can monitor buildings and the performance of those buildings remotely. So we have systems and devices that read all these large and medium and small buildings, bring all that back to a central environment, and then we can act on that back here and make recommendations on how to not only save but continue saving energy in literally thousands of buildings at a time. Some of our largest clients are uh, the state of Missouri, which was the first one to kind of buy into this technology, city of Kansas City, the state of New York, Ascension Hospital now, one of our latest. We have not only well-trained people and this great block of new startup activity that's going on, but also there's this old school tech community, especially with all the energy going on in St. Louis, of folks that are self-taught and entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, folks that are really innovative and not only using kind of traditional training, but also on the job training and a really diverse group now, I think that rivals the East and West Coast. For me, as a Midwesterner, having this loyalty component, this familial component that we get out of employees of St. Louis, it's a very important and attractive reason to be in St. Louis. innovative tech startup that's really focused on personalizing career pathways for college students transitioning to the workforce. One of the things that we realized is that there really isn't a place where someone uh, can discover companies and opportunities. Young people are doing a job search for the first time in college more often than not. And so how can they discover companies in a way that fits within the traditional recruiting process? And that's really what we've been changing. I came to St. Louis because, uh, in part, Arch Grants, uh, as well as Capital Innovators. We operate in a space that requires collaboration from so many different audiences. St. Louis is one of the perfect places to facilitate that process. St. Louis is great because it allows me to efficiently execute my business model. It's not too crowded where you get lost in the shuffle or, or too dispersed where it's just very hard to access things. Manage the expectations and growing in this region and, and really showing a model of public-private uh, partnerships and how you can really uh, generate a more efficient workforce is something that I think we can replicate in every region across the country. Everybody talks about it, but I don't know if people are really doing things that are progressive to really help um, move the conversation forward in a tangible way. So the opportunity to contribute to the community while also building a business is phenomenal. 
we already are getting inbound calls from other regions saying, I'm hearing about what you're doing in St. Louis. Uh, can you please bring that here? And that's, that's super positive. So it really can be a model um, that can be scaled across the country, uh, but it starts doing it in your own backyard. St. Louis is one of the perfect places to facilitate that process. Helping people rediscover what's great about St. Louis and how to find themselves in St. Louis has been the primary mission of why I wanted to start an event design company that helped create new and interesting experiences to attract people that are not only millennials, but baby boomers and Xers and everyone in between that's trying to find their way in the startup and innovation spaces around the St. Louis metropolitan area. I've met people that have recently moved here with their startup from Seattle. I've met people from the East Coast that have moved here. And they moved here because of the great opportunity to be able to start a business and the great quality of life that St. Louis is now offering. Being able to accept people that come from a different perspective maybe a different you know, background even that helped them get to who, where they are today and then to be a part of a community that's welcoming to those differences. I think it's an amazing opportunity for St. Louis and a great way for us to show the rest of uh, the U.S. and around the world that this is a great place to start a business or to grow a business. Hi, I'm Chuck Cohn. I'm the founder and CEO of Varsity Tutors. Varsity Tutors was founded 11 years ago on the campus of Washington University in St. Louis, where we began with $1,000, two tutors, and the idea that there was a better way to learn. We're now a company of more than 500 employees, with nearly 150 of them calling St. Louis home. Over 40,000 tutors use our platform to share their expertise and to help others meet their educational goals. This past year, we've raised $50 million in our Series C round, which included investments from Learn Capital, TCV, and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. In total, we've raised over $100 million to become the best funded tech startup in Missouri. These funds have enabled us to disrupt the tutoring industry with the largest live learning platform in the US and to begin expanding internationally, where tutoring is a $100 billion a year market. Our vision at Varsity Tutors is to seamlessly connect experts and learners in any subject, anywhere, anytime. And we are well on our way towards realizing this vision. In St. Louis alone, we've helped more than 4,000 families achieve their goals. Our award-winning technology platform connects vetted experts with learners in more than 1,000 subjects, while our first-of-its-kind instant tutoring product offers on-demand assistance in more than 150 different subjects. No other tutoring platform has invested in technology and simultaneously scaled quality. Despite some of our recent milestones, we have humble beginnings and have benefited tremendously from being part of the St. Louis community. I'm a first-time entrepreneur and a first-time CEO. I started the company when I was 21 years old and had no idea what I was doing. And I have a lot of people in St. Louis to thank for helping me on this journey. Whether it was Washington University and the Scandalier Center, for helping me start Varsity Tutors in an Introduction to Entrepreneurship course, or the countless area leaders who served as mentors and advisors to me along the way. St. Louis has been a terrific place to start and grow this business. As a St. Louis native, it's important to me that we reinvest in the city as a company and support the area's continued growth. In the past, we fundraised for local charities and offered our headquarters for events. A new company benefit enables employees in our St. Louis office to give back to the city during normal business hours with a select set of service projects with organizations in our area. There is incredible energy and excitement in St. Louis for established companies and startups alike. Our city is a great place to start a business and proves that innovation can and does exist outside the hubs of New York and San Francisco. My thanks go out to Mayor Krusen and County Executive Stanger and the partnership for working to create a favorable environment for companies like Varsity Tutors. We consider it an honor to be among those companies that are redefining technology and its role in St. Louis. What an inspirational video. Can you believe that this company is at the heart of improving the way students around the world, not just in this country, around the world are educated? 
Plus, it's always great to hear that a local company has taken off in such a big way. The Varsity Tutors leadership team is here today, and we thank you so much for growing St. Louis. At this time, yes, give them a round of applause. Thank you, Varsity Tutors leadership team. At this time, I'd like to bring back up the partnership CEO, Sheila Sweeney. Hi, thank you to Varsity Tutors for being here with us today and for growing their tech company in St. Louis. You can see from their rapid growth that workforce must be our top regional priority. Our established and emerging tech companies all need talent to grow here and to stay here. And also thank you to our board members and our chairman, Carlos Ramirez. Your excellent leadership makes our work possible. And then a special welcome to Rob Dixon, who's the leader of the Missouri Department of Economic Development. He's a true partner in everything we do, and we thank you so much, Rob. We're seeing incredible growth in St. Louis firms this year. The number of cranes in our skies is exciting. To name just a few, Centene is embarking on their $770 million expansion, and Pfizer's bringing R&D and manufacturing back to St. Louis. Next time you're at a Cardinals game, peer out into the outfield and watch Ballpark Village 2 take shape. And the Blues are also renovating their stretch of Clark Avenue and investing in their talent pipeline through the support of a new youth sports complex to develop local youth hockey and to bring hockey travel teams to the region. Heads in beds and fans in our seats. Our entertainment venues and sports teams bring a great deal of commerce to the surrounding businesses in our region. At the partnership, we're invested in the success of all businesses, both big and small. Our strength is our people, and one of our most valuable assets is Erica Henderson. Erica is the executive director of our federally... <laughs> uh, of our federally designated Promise Zone, which encompasses all of North St. Louis City and most of North County. So, to hear more from uh, about our Promise Zone, please welcome Erica Henderson. Good afternoon. Thank you, Sheila, Mayor Krusen, and County Executive Stenger for the opportunity to speak today. As the Executive Director of the Promise Zone, I'm going to share some highlights of our work However, I will sh explain the why of the Promise Zone. Uh, this is a federal designation that encourages regional collaboration, which is truly our only path to creating a better, more equitable St. Louis. Professionally, I am deeply committed to the work as I strongly believe that economic growth in St. Louis is only possible if it's inclusive. Economic development in our urban communities requires us to connect more people to the resources, programs, services, and opportunities that will improve the quality of life and advance economic mobility. Personally, there is urgency for me and our partners to approach old problems in new ways as not to repeat mistakes of the past. We cannot afford to promote any more unfulfilled promises. People are depending on our work to improve their lives here, today, and now. They can no longer wait. It is our responsibility to remove all barriers as not to create any additional studies as this work has been done. Our focus is to get stuff done, to do the work, and we have to do the work together. The Promise Zone was designated in 2015, and it is the largest of the 22 zones across the country. There are approximately 200,000 residents in this 60-mile geography. The boundaries are everything north of Del Mar all the way up to the Mississippi River in North St. Louis County. This represents 28 municipalities, 11 city wards, 7 school districts, and 25 zip codes. Today, I represent 150 regional agencies 
who are reforming, revitalizing, and breathing new life and energy into our region through their work in the Promise Zone. Many are in the room today. Thank you. We also work with federal, state, and local policymakers, community leaders to ex execute our six goals of increasing economic activity and workforce readiness, improving educational outcomes and health and wellness, reducing serious and violent crime, and developing sustainable communities. I appreciate the opportunity to share the work of the Promise Zone with you, an audience full of public and private sector leaders. To our private sector, you must invest in the black community. The Promise Zone is 90% African American. and is a tool for disinvested communities to advance economic activity by focusing on career and economic mobility. By advancing economic and career mobility for residents, we are creating investment opportunities for community development agencies, developers, and banks to fund affordable and inclusive housing, quality health care, and public safety. Deliberate and intentional investment in our black community is a real business opportunity. Economists with UMSO's Public Policy Research Center estimate that eliminating racial income gaps would boost the St. Louis economy by as much as $14 billion. Nearly $14 billion in unrealized economic potential. That's a lot of economic injustices. And it's not smart and it's not sustainable. As a result, initiatives within the Promise Zone focus on a combination of people, place, and purpose. Partners recognize that equity is a business imperative, is necessary to make the economy work better for more people. I hope that all of us together can agree that societal challenges are really untapped business opportunities. The work of the Promise Zone is exciting because we are thinking bigger, demanding better, and changing the possibilities for communities that have generally been left behind. Chronic systemic issues such as racial equity, income inequality, and access to opportunity must be resolved. Tangible progress has been made towards each of the six goals and more than $60 million in federal funding has come directly to agencies for programming and services within the zone. A copy of our 2018 progress report, which highlights the work of our partners, is available for your review on our website. I am going to quickly focus on projects advancing three of the six goals of investment, real estate, and talent. One way we have begun to increase economic activity in the Promise Zone is through investment. Since 2015, over $4.4 billion in infrastructure development has happened, or has been announced, excuse me, in the zone, including, as Mayor Cruson mentioned, the $1.75 billion NGA project. Of the $4.4 billion in anticipated investments, over $475 million of real estate development has been completed to date. As residents, we always don't know what development is happening in our community until we see the buildings going up. We've created a tool to track an investment of real estate in the zone, and this digital and interactive map includes construction, community institutions, healthcare facilities, and more. It provides developers with insight on activity that's building critical mass and helping users to identify points of connectivity, accessibility, and opportunity. You can also access this on our website. Improving educational outcomes and workforce readiness are jointly linked. So too is the future of business and the health of our community. Programmatic efforts are being designed to ensure students in the zone are college and career ready by implementing wraparound services to support children from birth to post-graduation. We work very closely with superintendents and educational partners within the zone to identify opportunities to help young people build skills and work experience while in high school. All of the superintendents in the zone are working hard to provide the highest quality of education for our students. 
As we build young talent, we also have 30 plus workforce agencies working collectively to develop a regional workforce system to connect residents to training opportunities, well-paying jobs, and pathways to economic parity. Today's complex challenge is to systematically train individuals across disciplines to utilize more than one training provider, deploy multiple service mechanisms, and to quickly fill gaps and accelerate training in response to the ever-growing corporate demand. To promote literacy and improve access to reading materials, we have partnered with the St. Louis County Library System to create a library box program. These decorative boxes look like little birdhouses and they were built and painted by community and children in the zone. These boxes are strategically located along Metrolink stations, community gathering spaces, and directly in neighborhoods. The Birds of Wisdom design on all of the boxes is that of local artist Kababi Bayak. Earlier, I mentioned our interactive map to track real estate investment. However, that is only valuable if we build up the human capital on a parallel path. We are doing this by partnering with Creating Whole Communities, a partnership with UMSO and the University of Missouri Extension. Together, we have developed an advanced leadership training program to build community leaders. The Neighborhood Leadership Fellows Program is developing the skills of residents at decision-making tables for a more equitable regional policies in their communities and neighborhoods. Through a competitive process, we reviewed over 100 applications and ultimately identified 23 of the most passionate and committed leaders who are currently on a nine-month leadership journey. They meet monthly to share collaborative learning experiences at our Wellston Business Center, and some of them have joined us today. In closing, I need you. I invite you to join me and our partners in rethinking your priorities and to push beyond the work that is comfortable. I need you to consider your business strategies and ask where is your opportunity to create social impact that benefits the community yet yields returns to your company. The Ferguson Commission released the calls to action. We have the For the Sake of All report, and yesterday, Segregation in St. Louis, Dismantling the Divide was released at the Fair Housing Conference, so we have many roadmaps that can assist you in taking the next steps. There is so much power in a united front. Together, we can foster access to opportunity, prosperity that is shared, and promote resilience through the lens of race and economic equity. Getting the work right is the only, I must go back, getting the work right is the only true way to transform our region. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. You, you can see why our St. Louis Promise Zone is, is the most respected one uh, in the nation, and we often get calls uh, to replicate some of the programs going on. Uh, the work at the Business Center in Wellston got the attention of the University of Missouri Extension Office, as Erica mentioned, but they recently honored her with an award for all of her efforts in the Promise Zone. In addition to... In addition to Erica's work in the Promise Zone, the partnerships devoting an entire division to ensure employers have the talent they need when they need it. We're especially interested in how we ensure our young people are inspired to develop the skills they need to pursue meaningful careers. To help us understand the significance of opportunity before us, please join me in welcoming Sharita Hagler of STEM STL, an initiative of BioSTL. Science, technology, engineering, and math. These are the skills of the future, the tools our young people will need to be able to fulfill a skilled workforce to keep St. Louis competitive in a global economy. The problem, we're not keeping up. 
Analysts project that within the next 10 years, there will be about 1 million more tech jobs in the U.S. than computer scientists to fill them. Meanwhile, just 25% of our nation's high schools offer computer science classes. Here in St. Louis, we're lagging in middle skills jobs that require problem solving, organizational, research, and computer skills. They are needed in healthcare, manufacturing, transportation, and other industries in Missouri where the demand for jobs far exceed the supply, supplies of workers. That means that the jobs exist, people with the skills to fill them do not. That's a problem, and we're looking to solve it. We've launched a new STEM STL initiative for our entire region. We're embarking on creating an ecosystem of collaborative partners. Many of you who are in this very room today, dedicated to making science, technology, engineering and math, or STEM, an everyday part of learning from birth through college and career. St. Louis is fortunate to be a part of a national STEM learning ecosystem, a technical advisory group that is helping us to ensure that we have programming to support learning and workforce preparation. STEM STL has, selected, has been selected of one of 56 ecosystems across the country. Through the efforts of BioSTL and on behalf of the region to catalyze and scale high quality STEM programs for all young people with an emphasis on underserved and underrepresented communities. It's no secret that in order to compete for the top jobs in industries, that we must have a STEM literate workforce. That requires a cradle to career approach. We're in the middle of gathering stakeholders to build our foundation. Our team is comprised of supporters from pre-K through 12 education, informal and out of school STEM programs, STEM rich institutions, business and industry, higher ed and philanthropic organizations committed to fostering a robust dialogue and action to drive this initiative. STEM STL is convening and fostering collaboration among all sectors of the community to develop and deploy quality STEM learning opportunities that support the, support the growth of diverse problem solvers, innovators, and critical thinkers enabling them to thrive in a globally connected world. The STEM ecosystem effort is all about ensuring that young youth and adult learners in St. Louis have equitable access to STEM opportunities and making sure that we continually replenish the workforce pipeline so that businesses like yours can su be successful and thrive. It is designed to make sure that we provide you with a workforce that can meet the demands of our rapidly changing industries and the creativity, resilience, and creative thinking to discover innovative solutions that address our greatest challenges. As the ecosystem evolves, students will be able to connect what is learned in and out of school with real world opportunities. In order to prepare students, STEM STL focus, focus areas include equipping educators at all grade levels to lead quality STEM learning experiences, creating and connecting STEM-rich learning environments in diverse settings and communities, ensuring children of all grade levels and parents are exposed to and aware of STEM learning and career pathways, developing communication strategies that support collaboration and connectivity among stakeholders and builds a community culture of STEM learning, and outreach to grow cross-sector partnership and participation that enhance and sustain the ecosystem. We will succeed together when we all work together to solve this challenge. So we want to know, what, does your, what does, your company does your company have a STEM program? Or do you have ideas about what's missing from our ecosystem? We want to know so that we can create an entire catalog of opportunities and knit them together to provide young people with the best, most clear-cut pathway to a STEM-fluent future. We want to know what your skill and talent needs are so we can best align St. Louis's STEM type pipeline, talent pipeline with the demands of our region's employers. We welcome you. We encourage you to be a part of the conversation and work groups to ensure the success and sustainability of the ecosystem. It is our goal to ensure that 
everyone has STEM opportunities. STEM for all, thank you. Thank you, Sharita. You and Deborah Patterson certainly have our support. And I invite all of our guests today to support this exceptional work by BioSTL and STEMSTL. This past year, the partnership led our region's response to the Amazon RFP for their HQ2. The call came on September 7th, and within hours, we mobilized a regional team. Out of that work came some very bold ideas and a commitment to regionalism. In six short weeks, we produced the playbook of a renaissance of a great American city, our city. We proposed a vision for commerce from Lambert to Mid-America Airport and between the Missouri River and both sides of the Mississippi. Our Amazon proposal is used every day across our region as multiple organizations work to attract new and retain existing companies in the bi-state region. Hustle from day one became our rally cry. It's a mentality that we're different because we stay up later and we come to work earlier and we make this city great. Our rally cry and related materials were created by the creative firm of Rogers Townsend and it's already won three Addy Awards. So take a look. From the broad shoulders of the Big Muddy, it flows. Dripping from the brow, down the nose of progress. Onto cobblestone streets paved with brick and desire. It's a Midwest Coast mantra born of a city's ambition to produce and prosper and fulfill a gateway's promise. This up and atom, up for anything, hustle from day one mentality, fueling a scrappy city's relentless pursuit to make better, do better, and be better. So we stay up later and we show up earlier. Say, what if as much as can do? We chase new world frontiers with old fashioned wide eyed wonder and commit ourselves to always be moving, always be doing, always be making this life in the loo. So when a city smack dab in the middle of America hits you right square between the eyes with its unbridled optimism, that's when you know that on the border of a state that says, show me, sits a city intent on showing you, not just a gateway to the West, but a gateway to what's next. A shining monument to the will and the want to of a city of restless dreamers. Then this landmark in your soon to be front yard begs the question, when do we start? Unbridled optimism and restless dreamers, right? I, 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 I think that's a, that's a great mantra to live by. Uh, thank you to County Executive Stanger and Mayor Krusen, of course, for telling us to go for it, and Rogers Townsend for all the donated hours that they did to produce that video. And then a special thank you to Chairman Mark Kern and Terry Beach of St. Clair County, who have joined us today and um, we're such a great part of our team, as well as Jennifer George, who's here on behalf of St. Charles County Executive Steve Selman, Elman, and East St. Louis Mayor Amika Jackson-Hicks. We're so happy to have you. Greg Prestman uh, from St. Charles is out of town celebrating an anniversary, but Jennifer, please tell him that, that we did miss him and we thank him for his cooperation in, in all that we did. As you know, St. Louis didn't make the Amazon shortlist for HQ2, but just weeks after the announcement came the news that Amazon was building a state-of-the-art fulfillment center in St. Charles County. And we were thrilled because Amazon told us that what they saw in our proposal factored heavily in their decision to continue to expand in the bi-state region. But Amazon was really a catalyst for change. 
So today I'm thrilled to announce that along with our economic development partners in St. Clair County, St. Charles County, St. Louis County, the City of St. Louis, we will all sign an MOU to enter into a cooperation agreement to collaborate and cooperate in the provision of economic development services. It's an agreement to work jointly toward common goals of growing investment, growing our population, and making St. Louis a destination location. There's so much power in a united front. Today I'm pleased to have Bob Clark here with us. His vision of what the riverfront, downtown, and our airport could be shaped our Amazon proposal. Without hesitation, Bob opened the doors to his company and dedicated his brilliant staff who embody the hustle from day one mentality. Thank you to Clayco and Forum Studios and HOK. And with that, please help me welcome Bob Clark. I thought there were gonna be four more speakers and two more videos before I came up. Are you guys awake? It's a little late. I just had one of those uh, unalcoholic beers, and I feel better. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I feel like I lost weight, and I feel better. <clears throat> Actually, it might have had some alcohol in it. I don't know. I want to thank Sheila for that introduction. Um, I'm enthused by what I'm hearing today, and uh, I'm excited to share my own thoughts. Most of you know me, but interestingly enough, none of you know where I live. Everybody thinks I live in Chicago or Colorado or something else, but I actually live in St. Louis. How many people knew that? Like Nobody, see what I mean? I actually live on an airplane, um, and I do uh, travel a lot, but I live in the same house in St. Louis here that I raised my children in, and I have a huge investment in the community. We have over 1,000 employees here, and we continue to grow our business rapidly uh, here and, and across the country. And we now have the largest architecture firm in the state with the merger of Bates and Forum. Clayco does have a large North American footprint, and we're currently working in over 30 states and 35 cities. So we have a pretty good view of what's happening in those uh, communities. St. Louis has many positive attributes, but we do also have challenges and things that we have to fix. But by no measure are we unique. For one thing, I think right now we have incredible energetic leadership in the community, and I've witnessed directly working with Steve Lida and Mark Kern, and particularly working with Sheila Sweeney. Um, I would tell you that I would put her on a par with any real estate developer that I've worked with across the country. I mean, working with her, getting in the trenches, is uh, really, really hard work, because she works you. And uh, recently, I worked with that whole team on this Amazon proposal, and I'm really not sure what Amazon's going to do, although they are my largest client, and I do have some insight. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I'll tell you this. We put an amazing proposal together that really showed off St. Louis's assets, and we were honest about our deficits, and we talked about plans to work on those for a positive outcome. Anybody who hasn't seen the Amazon proposal, I think you can go on St. Louis Partnerships website and see the whole proposal, see the work that went into it, but also really look at it carefully, the written document, because I think it's a great assessment of where we're at in St. Louis. I still think if Amazon chose St. Louis, that it would be a great choice for them and it would be a good outcome overall. My takeaway is that we have incredible development opportunities, uh, things that I really didn't even know about the community myself. And looking at our entire inventory of land in, comparison, in comparing our cost of living in St. Louis to other communities that we'd be competing with, we're very competitive and our development costs are terrific. And I don't know how many people have ridden Metrolink from one, from one end to the other in its complete form and got off at every stop and walked around.
but everybody who lives in St. Louis should do it. It's an amazing asset that we have right at our fingertips. The community has real challenges too, though, in terms of skilled workforce. We heard a little bit about that today. It's true. We're desperate for a more skilled workforce. Our education systems have to get better. Even at the college level, we're not producing enough technology experts and software engineers. But quite frankly, I'll tell you another thing that I know is that most of the other cities, including the 20 cities that were shortlisted by Amazon, they don't have enough either. And some of them, even major cities, are in worse trouble than St. Louis is in. The biggest issue I saw in the Amazon proposal, though, was in our disconnected uh, kind of effort with the state. I know Rob Dixon is here, and I know we're going to fix that, but I'm pretty certain that Missouri was the only state that actually turned in its own proposal separate from the communities. And I think, quite frankly, that Amazon was confused by getting all of these different proposals instead of getting a single, unified, excellent proposal. I think the community would also benefit from becoming more unified um, and having the, the county and the city merge. And I'm personally a drum beater for that to happen sooner rather than later. I think, you know, the 500 million or billion dollars a year in extra cost is probably a very low estimate. It has to be multi-billion, billions of dollars that are wasted that could go to some of the things that the mayor talked about. But it's not the, even the money that is the reason why we should do it. It's a cultural issue. So uh, I think the communities also need business leaders to work very closely with the political and re religious leaders to prepare St. Louis region for the sweeping changes that are happening, happening across the world. As we move from an industrial, uh, a, an industrial economy to a technology economy, the major changes that are gonna happen with people moving from small towns to larger urban areas. I mean, the next 20 years are gonna really create incredible changes that we just have to get ready for. And I think by merging and this work that we're gonna do with Rob Dixon and the state is gonna be terrific for us. So I think I just wanna take one more, put one more little bit of emphasis on the business community's role. You know, we have the Chamber of Commerce, we have the RCGA, there's the Missouri Chamber is here today. We have Civic Progress, we have the St. Louis, we have, I mean, I don't know, I think we might have 15 or 20 organizations. Spending a, as much time in Chicago as I do, as big as the city is, as many areas of uh, disparate interests that there are in Chicago, I will tell you that they have a very powerful single voice in their Chamber of Commerce. And I've seen it, I've witnessed it, I've been welcomed into it, and I think there's a lot to learn from some of these other cities, but we have to bring our business community fully into the process of supporting our political leaders, and we have to be listening to the citizens through their religions and their educations and their schools. It can't just be the two pieces. It really is gonna take everybody together. So Clayco's grown from two people in 1984 to um, over 2,000 people and $2.4 billion in revenue this year. And I think the main reason that we've done that is because we always believe that we can instead of we believe that we can't. And so the last message that I'd like to leave you with is that the most frustrating thing that I find in St. Louis is that we kind of have this inferiority complex. There's an enormous amount of negativity when we first got the, the RFP for the Amazon proposal, the, the most disheartening thing that, that was happening, and I know Sheila saw this, I know the mayor saw this, I know Steve and Mark deal with this all the time, is the enormous amount of negative kind of beating ourselves up that went on in the written press, that went on in the media, and that was in the social media. I started to try to respond to it, but then I finally gave up. And so what I would just say is that the number one thing that we have to do is change our attitude in St. Louis. 
We have to be more positive, and we have to ask the negative naysayers to be more positive and, and hold them accountable for helping us make a difference. I always say that culture and a positive attitude trump strategy in every challenge. I think with the current leadership that we have sitting in the room right now, with the right level of business support, that we can make that change. But we have to start now, and we have to do it every day. I know I'm personally committed to doing my part, and I'm asking all of you to come along. Thank you. Bob, thank you so much for, for joining us and for everything you do for St. Louis. So thanks to all of you for your efforts on behalf of our region. Uh, enjoy your swag bags. You'll find a copy of our Gateway to the Best. Uh, our great partners at St. Louis Magazine produce this best of issue. It's been really popular and well received by corporate uh, recruiters and, and it really helps to show off St. Louis. So if your HR departments want any copies, please let us know. And, have an enjoyable day, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us for HEC TV's live streamcast of the 2018 annual meeting of the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. We hope you'll visit us at hectv.org, where you'll find all of the links you'll need to learn more about today's program. Once again, thanks for joining us. I'm Brenda Madden. <laughs>